couple of them, three of them. Yeah, it is going to be coming. That 040 is going to bring it like a little more towards you. Okay. So we might have to just come up a little bit on the slope or on the delta. And I think after that we'll be able to do a long move. It's not too much of ridges around here. Fabio, it's kind of, yeah. yeah, it's just like the whole slope yeah, looks smooth, pretty gentle, yeah. yeah. But we'll stay at the steepest part, according to the bathy. Sounds good. Looks like a head. <laughs> Human head sponge. Some crispy terrain here. <laughs> crispy. <laughs> nice. Crispy is better. <laughs> yeah, for corals. And bacon. Fabio, we had a question a few minutes ago about um, just what we're seeing on the seafloor here as far as just the different organisms. I think somebody was asking earlier if we'd seen sea cucumbers or just kind of what we're looking at. Um, well, we have a lot of anemones, this coralimorphos, this kind of pur purple, round, kind of fluffy anemone. Yeah, we've come up Lots like of rockfish. Uh, yeah, to. there's some white sea cucumbers there, Spanikia. Uh, those corals are seen sparsely in here it are yeah, black perfect. corals, even though they're white. They're mm -hmm. antipatarians. Uh, these are Chrysopatis uh, speciosa. And yeah, it's a lot of the fauna that, happen that occurs in our other Barclay Canyon sites, but here you have a bit more of the sessile ones. That's a bit more sparse, slope, slopey terrain. They're feeding on particles, right? So they're they want to get exposed to the currents. So here we have, we have nice, cool sponges. The, the white one, for sure, we know is this Taurocalyptus. So you see this orientation but here? This yellow one, I That'll be fine, sure. but once we go this way, we'll have to like almost like, you know, We're like you'll heading. have to you'll have to slow a bit and change heading while Argus comes up and like we'll kind of wagon wheel it. That's, that's a bubble gum coral wagon wheel. That's not a phrase. You know what I mean? Darius Rucker. Yep. <laughs> wagon wheel it. <laughs> wagon wheel it. That's a. It's not a Darius Rucker song. It's a cover. It's a Bob Dylan cover. Yeah, well, you know, the best one is Darius Rucker. Uh, nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Agree to disagree? Mm. <laughs> or fight it out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Dylan will end all, be all. Yeah. Well. Jake's willing to take a punch for Hootie. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a difference between That's Hootie and Darius. Punch. Darius is a member of the Grand Old Opry. Hoodie is not. That uh, sea star looks like a very expressive dancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> looks like that bush we found today. Okay, I'm gonna call in a long move. Bridge, nav. Call it in, Captain. Step 150 meters, 150 meters, bearing 048. Thank you. You might have to slow a bit if you're ahead. 
while we, uh, Argus is still tracking, but you're getting a little ahead. Argus. Argus isn't tracking anything. Argus is back in Honolulu. You can't erase 10 years of hundreds of dives. <laughs> hundreds, tiny I tell sable you. Fish? Yeah, I think Argus will be retired too. Like Surprise is steel. <laughs> sable fish are always moving. Let's try not to blow down the canyon, I guess. I'm surprised these sponges aren't just full of sediment. They contract. Oh yeah? That's our new paper coming up on Folger's Pinnacle. Oh, you know you're that sponge? Me the spoilers. That's a highlight. Yeah. Yeah, we had five years of a camera pointing at the single sponge and then we captured it shrinking and com contracting at various rhythms. And yeah, what are they retracting? Are they? Are well, there's uh, some seasonal contractions, but there's also a response to organic matter in the water, like turbidity. Yeah. They try to kind of clean their uh, filtration channels. Oh, so they can clean out the dust or the sediment from inside those tubes, you suspect? Yeah. Oh. And they actually have some time-lapse footage from some uh, glass sponges in the deep sea. They also, they didn't have as quite high frequency as we had in image acquisition, but they, they also uh, saw some contraction, contractions of the... Our sponge is not a glass sponge, it's a demo sponge, Desmo sponge. Is this Sally? This sponge? Yeah, it's Sally Lee's, yeah. Yeah, as we as we go along this move, we'll just make it so Hercules is slowly like kind of right in front. No, it's not a drastic stop when we have to go that north route jog. Roger that. Did we do an Atalanta only dive and shakedown this year? Was no, here? we didn't have to spin it out because they had just put the cable on. Yeah. Okay. I was just looking, it looks like we've only done one Atalanta only dive ever. Maybe two. I don't know if we do a thousand. Yeah, maybe two. No. One. Look at that. What's that? Only one. Those eggs? That looks like a uh, sponge. sponge. Wow, jinx. I doubt you have them here, but uh, BC is one of the uh, few places, I think few, where uh, cloud sponges come up to shallow depths. Cloud sponges. Yeah. Uh, I just had an image of them up over here. Uh, in North Vancouver, White Cliff Park, there's a cliff there, a wall, that has cloud sponges as shallow as like uh, 30 meters. What's their normal depth? Uh, deep. Like uh, hundreds? Yeah. Hold on. Jake, I'm going to pause this move and go actually a little bit east to back away. Because I feel like we're getting a little too up on the flat part of the ridge. Roger. I'll just, uh, let's see, I'll hold position. I will go zero, 0.70 zero for 60 meters. 50 meters. Bridge nav. We like to hold position and then 
Call in a move five zero meters, bearing zero seven zero. Lots of memory here. Thank you. Yeah, that will take you off the wall a bit so we can stay where we're at without. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, they go normally around 16, up to 1600 meters deep for the cloud sponges. Oh, okay. But in the BC fjords, they're uh, much shallower. Yeah, we'll have loads of sponge reefs here in BC. Lots are protected. Did you dive on those at, at Vancouver? Yeah, yep. Oh, it's it's a good dive minus reset on fly. the giant hill you have to climb to get down to the entry point and at the end of your dive. Matter of fact, I think we're using carts. <laughs> but there's a huge upwelling there at that wall. I think the wall's like 600 feet tall or so. Oh, wow. Spencer. Another dead wreckfish. <laughs> Looks pretty dead. <laughs> uh, just conserving energy, I guess. Whatever yeah. they just sit there, right? Yeah, they might be sleeping. <laughs> what did you see earlier when we saw that predation event? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Sablefish eating the. Sablefish yeah. eating uh, a rockfish. Rock did you fish? actually see it? Take yeah. the rockfish or? No, the rockfish looked like it. Yeah. It had been a little bit tossed around. It yeah. looked dead yeah, for a bit. Didn't look like it went through a thruster. No. It just looked like something's been attacking it, carrying it around in its mouth or something. Yeah. yeah. Awake now. Come on to the light, little one.
One more dive, and that's it. Yeah. No more fun. Hmm. I'm not sure if we're going to um, be doing a little bit more mapping. There was talks of that with Megan, yeah. well, if we have some extra time. I think if there is extra time, we'll, be, we'll do it after the next dive. Okay, yeah. So Just get all the dive stuff done. Get all the dive ROV work done out, out of the way, and then there's some rocks. Is that a crab? Hi. Wow. Big crab. See how much more life that's there is a when, crab. There's a, when there's a substrate that's rocky. Yeah. yeah. I do not know what that is. Symbol Gagor, yeah. Bridge nav. Step seven five meters, bearing zero four five. Thank you. I had my mic open earlier. Oh, so embarrassing. Had your mic open for what? For the bridge. Oh, so you're just chatting away? Yep. I think they're normally listening to SPL up there anyway. No, not typically. Only George would. Uh, let's take oil, a look. Oil does. Yeah, you let me know. I guess it's mate dependent. They usually, if they do have SPL and they have it on quiet, so then they can tell when I'm like calling in or when the navigator's calling in to them. No, uh, they're not listening to anything. No. Pretty sure Oriole uh, listens. Yeah. George would ch chime in sometimes. <laughs> Usually at inopportune moments when yeah. somebody dropped a sample or something, he'd be like, ooh. <laughs> 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 or say something snarky. Okay, so that next move is zero four five from here. Zero four um, five. Yeah, and so you'll want to change your heading slightly to port and kind of as we strafe around this uh, the slope. Some shell debris? Wow. Oh. That's interesting. Is it is this formerly diffuse venting well, or something? Or well we had methane hydrates around here too. Yeah. On the slopes? Uh well at our hydrate site. Right, right? yeah. We so. are in a little plateau there, but Yeah. Those are uh, the whole margin is littered with seeps. So not surprising if we find more a new seep site. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah, you'll want to slow a bit because I'm going to have, if Danny brings his head slightly more towards 315 than zero, Yep. we'll just start to, and then eventually we'll be going north and he'll have his heading at uh, 270 or ish or something. Roger. Nice. Are you wanting it? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Danny. 
Hear the please. More shells and what do you figure those, that white stuff is, Fabio? Uh, that's probably bacterial mats, actually. Appears that way. Nice. Is that related to the methane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the bacteria is thriving on the on the methane seeps. It's hard to tell if there were any fresh clam pockets in there. Um, yeah, if you. Unless we see if the pink, have, yeah. Those are the clams, calyptogenous, so, right? So those clams, um, what do they eat? What do they live off? Well, they have symbiotic bacteria that munched on the methane. So they're so kind they, of... They thrive on, on this association with the bacteria. So independent of the rest of the system, pretty much? Like the rest inputs from the rest of the... Yeah. Essentially, it's yeah, a lot of these animals they don't they rely solely on the symbiont form of nutrition, so but they don't eat the rest of the plankton falling down from the sun that part of um, the ocean. So there has been some, some they 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 rely also okay. in, in phytoplankton, so they're, yeah, so they're not the ones on but the you see that the seep disappear, they, they they don't thrive, right? Yeah, I guess so, and then. The two worms and stuff on the vents, they're, they don't need anything from the column, from the water column. They're exclusively vent fed. What do you know? It's, I think I would say, almost exclusively. Yeah, interesting. The organ that they have is the trophosome, right? Yeah, yeah. For the But the clams don't have a trophosome, they just... No, no, no. they just... The bacteria is all over their their guts and uh. but I've I remember reading in some papers quite some time ago that they could identify some sort of uh, proteins or lipids that could only be attributed to phytoplankton. Mm. So even though they are thriving on this symbiotic relationship, they still have some form of nutrition coming from the not the not the two worms though, but some some other seep seep fauna. That's interesting. Well, the the, the paper uh, we were commenting the other day um, well, we published with uh, Sarah Seabrook and oh, Andrew yeah. Terber. Mm -hmm. On the tunnel, tunnel crabs. Uh, so the we sampled those crabs here in Barclay Canyon at the Clyde Slope seeps. Yeah. And we found evidence um, in their tissues that the the signal of the bacteria, the fatty acids that are from the methanotrophic bacteria. But they also eat other things, right? So they they also eat uh, phytoplankton source, organic matter. But their part of the nutrition is coming from the methane, which is kind of interesting. If you think that we eat those crabs, we are on that same food web. Yeah, that's interesting to think of that the they're eating you're eating something that's thriving on chemosynthesis, or at least symbio partially, symbiosis partially. with. Yeah, an organism that has chemosynthesis, the bacteria or microbes.
Remember that we had the footage of the crabs flipping? Yeah, yeah. That's how we we got to do this this work. Bridge now. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> Step one seven five meters, bearing S zero zero eight. Yeah. Thank you. And then, Danny, as we start to see that move, we'll come a little bit more to port with Atlanta heading. And it's, we're going to be going north-ish. OK. I hear some airport music. Yeah, I hear it too. Airport, airport lounge <laughs> music. It's not I over the headset. No, I keep hearing it too. I found it. It's gone. Elevator music. I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it too, but I thought someone was just like. Yeah, he, he left his know. phone up here and it's his wake up alarm going ah. off. Oh, you're starting to tug a little bit. So uh, yeah. you might have to back down slope. That's just fine because we want to be on the steeper part anyway. So yeah. So are you back expecting up a bit, relief yeah. then? I guess. Ed? Uh, well, I can either try try and have someone roust him now, or have him wake up just shocked at one thirty in the morning or something, <laughs> which is a horrible feeling. Yeah, yeah, reserved only for birthdays. <laughs> uh, I messed up. I I rarely ever. I'm usually not. Oh, now I'm come usually on. right on right You're on time or late. Within seconds. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not like sleep through the alarm. No. Late. And no. I was the other day for my birthday. Well, what about the other present, huh? Well, you saw Josh the other day. He slept in, too. Uh, uh, Tarenko? Yeah. Oh, that's why he wasn't giving me a hard time. He was like, yeah, it's totally <laughs> fine, man. It happens to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why isn't he like <laughs> dragging me harder for this? <laughs> no, he was a good half hour or more. Oh, man, that makes total sense. I I've can't wait to bring that one up. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it he was so many like, don't worry so. about it, man. You're the only one that's thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Sweet, Dan's going to go see if he can find him. Or roust him. Spencer. Yeah, I didn't hear that until I, because I got these double ear yeah. things. I just took one off for a second there. Yeah, yeah, I kept my hearing, ear up. I kept hearing it come out of my left ear, but I couldn't place where yeah, it was. I didn't even from. see the screen light up. Oh, he's right behind you. Here. No, he's here. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> he came to find his alarm so he could wake up. Well, yeah, or he heard <laughs> us talking about it. I don't know. <laughs> Hey, was my phone up here? I'm trying to wake up. <laughs> it's about time for my alarm. And then he goes back and sleeps through it because I already <laughs> yeah. went off and I silenced it. Yeah, I gotta go sleep through it. Is there an alarm up here I'm supposed to sleep through? Thanks. <laughs> well, at least he didn't come up in his, in his pajamas. Yeah. Hmm. Right, this is where we're we kind of slow. Are we going down slope now? He'll uh, have to go a little bit, I think. Um, but it'll just kind of slow down in this turn while Argus starts to get up ahead of you again. Or not too ahead, but you see cool. it's a little bit far behind. Slowing down. Give it a... Yeah, he actually has a Pikachu onesie that he sleeps in. So, man, there's one of those on the ship still, I think. I have, I one, hope, at, I have one at home in my closet. What, you guys have pajama watch on here? Just, uh, just for, you know, formal occasions. Yeah. Everyone come to watch in, uh, 
in some kind of a costume? Well, if you're here on October 31st, we do. Oh, yeah. It's Comic-Con casual Fridays here on Nautilus. On Saturday? Yeah. I don't think I'm out on uh, Halloween this year. I am. I'll be here for Thanksgiving and darn near Christmas. Uh, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, a couple of years back I was on the ship till December 22nd. It's like screeching oh, yeah. and screaming in at yeah. Christmas. Were you on that one? I was on that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a fun commute home, huh? Yeah. Yeah, from Hawaii to the Northeast. It is weird being on flights to Hawaii when that's your commute to work and there's all these people on holiday. <laughs> yeah. I know. So what island yeah. are you staying on? I'm wearing jeans and steel yeah. toe boots and... Heroes yeah, I know. Flip-flops yeah. and lions. <laughs> that, that was Car my hearts. First time. <laughs> that was my first time flying into Hawaii to become an engineer on the Kino Moana. I was wearing my boots, had my had all my stuff in my backpack because when you're yep. eating a ship, you never pack your work clothes. What's feeling in the world is showing up for a ship and, oh, your bag's lost. Somebody, it might have been Sarah, showed up for an expedition. Yeah, that was Sarah. <laughs> yeah, Sarah I was Zebra. telling someone that story. She That's showed up in Samoa <laughs> and her bag... Never her, made it. Her bag didn't, was lost and then she went out and we were just cracking up because she... Someone had someone had an auxiliary bag that they had left on the ship so she no, borrowed from them. Allison and she, left her stuff right, behind for her because yeah. they were same size. And then, uh, and then she went out shopping and she had all these mismatched... Yeah. Weird sizes and yeah. weird clothes and yeah. Yeah, laughing about it. it. I think I gave her my running shorts or something. It was like yeah. we were all just chipping in. But <laughs> she's not we are not the same size. <laughs> I flew to um, Portugal for an expedition in the North Atlantic with Huey two years ago and it was uh, early summer of twenty twenty one and you know, full on COVID protocols in place. So we did a two week quarantine in Vigo, Spain, and my bag didn't make it um, and didn't get there until five days after we arrived at the hotel for our yeah. quarantine. So it was really lucky that we had to do the two week quarantine before getting on the ship. But the um, same thing, everybody everybody on the team just lent me, you know, right. some, like, exercise clothes and an extra shirt, and the, the girls on the team gave me some toiletry stuff, and everybody just chipped in. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah it was funny. She, they couldn't track the bag, but then Justin went to the Samoan airport, and he found it and just took it. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> just like there was no security or anything. he just like took her bag because it was hers, and then uh, and then f I think flew it back to Hawaii or because yeah, we came into something where he like sent it to Seattle or something where she would get it because it was a, I forget what it was it was some convoluted thing but they're like we can't locate it but Justin walked around and found it. In the, in the missing bags. Makes me wonder if it would be a good idea to put an AirPod, a, a, a uh, tag I in, have in AirTags in mine. I think it's not like it's lost, it just went to the wrong place. Yeah. It's starting to come around, we can, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're going going like this for a while now and then then a little tiny bump afterwards and that'll be the end of the horizontal Gonna do a reset. <laughs> Where 
is two. Where's the start of two? Oh, there it is. I've never lost a bag. Of course, now I said that it'll. The right, next one is going to be gone. There it goes. Yeah. I've been trying to fly mostly nonstop lately, though, unless I'm going somewhere crazy. I've had bags late, of course, but never lost one. I got my bag ripped apart. And ripped? Lost all diving equipment oh. in Hawaii. No way. My first time in Hawaii. Oh, that's a bummer. 2003. And yeah. Took took a while, but they, they paid me back everything. That's good. It's not, still not convenient, but... Yeah. It's funny, when you go to the island sometimes, they welcome you in uh, different ways. <laughs> You gotta pay homage to uh, Pele or something sometimes, you just, you know. I know okay, a couple people who live over on the big island and when they have something inconvenient happen, like ants get in their cereal or something, you just call it paradise tax. Yep, yeah. paradise tax. A lock. Doing great. Super steady. Totally in the box. How much more we got? Uh, two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got another. Atlantis got another 75 meters left in that move, and then another 50 after that. I'll call in. Are you happy with that heading, Renny? Yeah, that's fine. Still, yeah, we're that's keeping that's some eyes up ahead, you know? That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. How's the uh, Delta? Is all right? Delta's been beautiful. Yeah. I've been keeping about 25, 26. Yeah. It's getting a little bright there. Oh, we're closer now. That's a lot of ride out. Yeah, it just got steeper. Uh, I gotta turn it down. That's overexposed. There we go. Got those calibrated eyes, don't you? I don't even see a difference. Yeah, you can see in your mezzo there. See how this, it's tilted this way now? Yeah, it's starting to come back around. Uh, yeah, there you go. I've got electronic test and measurement gear over here that shows me my brightness levels. Ah, that's what it is. I have it built into this monitor too. And this one. Oh, that's cool. I also have um, audio levels built in. 
What else do I got going on right now? Waveform, uh, time code, um, captions. Got all the fun toys over there in the video department. Yeah. Oh, look, there's one of those. Uh, yeah, oh, hagfish. Is that a hagfish berry? Yeah. I thought it was one of those crazy spoon worms for a second. No, that's a uh, hagfish. Hagfish is burying his. Sticking its head in the. Yeah. Sticking its head in the sand, doesn't want to. Oh, I thought of that worm I was trying to describe the other day. I think they're called, maybe it's a, the common name is Medusa worm. I don't know. I think. Medusa worm. I know the yeah. spoon worms and then the ribbon worms that look like that. I don't know. One of all the pinnant worms. Might have to drop back and drop down a little deeper to stay on the ridge. I'll show you. It uh, see how it kind of like flattens out where you're headed. Oh uh, yeah. Just keep on the tighter contours. It's, it's minor, but you know, something. It's going to be causing gamut errors. Yep. Yeah, just uh, finishing up this transect. How much is left in it? About 60 meters, something like that. 60 meters. I'm gonna, we got 10 more left in this. I'll call in another 50 just north, and then that'll end it. But we'll have to wait for Adelina to stop swinging, and then we'll... Bridge nav. Five zero meters north. Thank you.
Um, I just, we're just finishing now this nearly north move, and now we're going to go north 50 meters. Um, it's starting to get into the flat zone here, and I think they want to stay in this t tighter contour so we can kind of ease back. And the end of it is only just ahead, uh, right here. Yeah, so just like up in here, that'll be the end. We're just going to go up here like this, and that'll be the end of it. So we're trying to stay out of the flat top and kind of like stay in the in the business there. Hey, Sean. Then after that, um, we're going to start down slope at the bottom and then do a video transect up the slope. Yeah, I think so, unless you want to try to drive it. It's up to you. Um, I don't think they are expecting to drive it. They're just expecting the bottom up. Uh, I'm not sure because these are not correct contours or the, the numbers are wrong. Looks like some egg towers there. Watch change of video. Good luck. Hey, Jay. Morning.
clip on the whale bones. No, no, no. The the bo the packages, the the bone. Yeah. Bye. Finishing up, yeah. Or actually, no. Did Sean, did Rick say we, we already finished it? First transect, we did, right? End of transect. This, now we have, there you go. Now we have. Now we're gonna go down, downhill. Test one, two, test one, two. Good evening. Good evening. They're just here on... Is this cable on the map? Then it will be on the map. On Megan's map. You can... Uh, Move the boat to the next waypoint whenever. Some deep sea song. What's the uh, what's the bearing, Megan? So we need to go. Range yeah, bearing. This part here. About so 300 meters. We're gonna, we're gonna seven one. Here. Zero seven one. Zero seven ones are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like. So, do you want to back up that way, yeah. that far, or right, and just, drive? Just move the boat. Zero seven one. Three hundred meters. Okay. And we'll figure that out when we get there. Okie dokie. Um, here on the cliff, they're doing zero point three. We'll see if I can. Knots. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this for the survey, we don't need Good to morning. be, it can be half knot. Good morning. Good. Yeah. So, we are ready for a really long ship move. Are you ready to go? All right. So, we'd like to go 300 Hello. meters, 071. This dive. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Fabio, I was gonna say you're sticking around. Whale fall, coral cliffs, whale bones, all at once. Wow. <laughs> so much excitement. I'm excited. What's the craziest thing you've seen so far? This cable. The craziest thing. Yeah. Ooh. I've seen a lot of crazy people in this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard them. No, we saw some really nice sponges, like giant, really giant. Ooh, like that yellow yeah. one. The yellow one, yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the the transect along the ridge was mo mostly soft sediment, but still, like like we're seeing now, lots of kind of boulders, and so it was pretty interesting. Lots of diversity of stuff. Mm-hmm. So bubblegum corals and and the uh, chrysopitis. Look at that. Dan is expert on that. Smelling the Look pot. at that operculum. Oh, also didn't help that I didn't fly into <laughs> to the ship. So you put a whale bone down here to kind of check out potential for a future whale fall? No, no, the whale bone is an experiment we I'm started yeah, right under you. Your you nine going, years Dan? ago. Right under you, Dan. Oh, okay. uh, it's sure, a colonization to, experiment, no. so we're just seeing what kind of animals going underneath, I don't colonize know. the bones. Okay. And there's a wood block in there as well. But the whale fall uh, site is a new well, project that will be we change deploying on, uh, the ship? in so 2025. No. In partnership with the BBC. Are we still in a transect? No. no. Oh, I can zoom out? Yeah. Thank you. We will essentially have a hey. crawler. We have a crawler, <laughs> Wally. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I, and we have yeah. we'll have specific cameras. The, the capability is there. Uh, I did not give you permission. Track I'm sorry. <laughs> whale carcass for many years. I know, yeah. Megan. Using the two you, video cameras. You flew for a little while, but you're not the pilot. Oh. <laughs> I answered the question that we're not on track, so I <laughs> Do we have a uh, official end time for this? Yeah, shift change. Okay, easy. Thank you. Look at those little guys. Oh, babies. <laughs> what kind of soul is that? There. I think it's like uh, the cephalus, one of those spotty ones. You hmm. can uh, kick the ship up to uh, half a knot. Okie dokie. Fringe nav. Ludicrous speed. <laughs> Are you going down downhill, Dan? Oh, can going we increase wherever. speed to half knot? Okay. Well, well, wherever my nose leads me. Thanks. Okay, well, I'm going like to keep go your... Uh, you can just look down. and <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably be on the uphill side of you, so you're fine there. Right now you're on the downhill side because I only have you have 33 That's cause depth delta and I have 22 to ground. <coughs> I know. You can keep looking uh, to the uh, to northeast, southwest. Northwest. Yeah, yeah I'm right trying to, but you no, keep right where you're looking now. Look west. Look west. Fabio, are you logging right now? Uh, yes. I mean, we stopped. This, we are in the middle of. We haven't started the second survey yet. Okay. So it says only have 30 meters from bottom. Uh, yeah, if you hit bottom, you're too I mean, close. We could <laughs> we could get the data stewards to log How on shore. How long will be entertaining for until? Hey Pete. Uh, Spencer, Zoom I'll man. be here yes. until. Zoom is in. Oh, after we you. finish the the whale bone recovery, so I'll be here for the second transect as well. Okay. Oh. There's Hercules. Pretty but yeah. to be clear, you're not annotating while we're off transect. Well, I, 
there's what tons kind of, of animals to annotate. So what I mean, kind of you so you are, <laughs> or I, I am, but uh, okay. she's, I, I'm happy that she she also does it. You know, all we, right. We don't need to. I mean, Spencer's gone, by the way. It's gone. Oh yeah. So yeah, someone gotcha. Oh yeah, it was 30 minutes ago. Comment. Zoom in a little more. See some polyp action. Yeah, we do like some nice polyps. You can go like oh, go and loud, some go all the way. Shrimp on there. Should we collect this baby? Those guys. Oh, there's a shrimpy shrimp. That's all the way. <laughs> right. You could rack forward, Dan. I don't know what. That is crazy. No, you're back. That forward. is very okay. pink. Yeah. Wow. Those are some big capellids. I am not a Mac user. Can someone please help me? <laughs> right click. <laughs> What's going on? Happy with the shrimp? You have you you I gotta like you go either to the happy bottom or the side. Yeah. Have you seen enough of it? It's good. Good data. Okay, Pete, if you do a slow oh, sorry. zoom out, slow sorry. zoom out, nice and easy. That stick is proportional over there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go all the way out, mate. You can see that shadow on the left side? On the shadow? right side? On the left side, there's a shadow. Oh, yeah. You can, uh, on that shadow's. A shadow's part of. Uh, right there. Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay. Zoom in again. Give it all you got, nice and slow though. This is purdy, purdy video here. So many shrimps. And some brachiopods. Okay, how many shrimps? And some demisponges. <laughs> and a squat lobster. A what lobster? Squat <laughs> lobster. I'm Sir Pullets. What do you think those Ooh, white tubes are? Oh yeah, the white tubes are Sir Pullets. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ship's moving at half a knot. I'm gonna have to go somewhere. Yeah. Well, you told us to speed up. I did. Fabio wants to hurry up and get there. Yeah. Because when we get there, we can do it again. The rest of us should go. Okay, Pete. It can go white. Those like scallops. What are they? Um, <laughs> bracket pods. No oh, bracket pods. Did I time? Full wide. Full power. Her we need to catch Atlanta. Do we have lights out or something? It seems like everything darker than normal. I repeat, it's got the iris turned out. And we're looking downhill. Mm-hmm. Mm, that'll do it. Yeah, looking downhill will do it, yeah. You can come down. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm following. Don't worry. Oh, should have stopped and look at that one. I was giving about a 25 to 27 meter delta during that transect and it worked really well. Uh, we're going downhill now, so mm -hmm. uh, I haven't figured out which way the wind's blowing yet, but I We're keeping you right at 30 as you crawl down the hill. You can actually uh, turn left a little and look and see what the tether's doing. <coughs> You know, the diverse diversity here is pretty d amazing. I haven't seen... What kind of coral is this? A white one. I haven't seen it any <laughs> like this anywhere else. I can only tell if we can see the polyps. Okay, Pete. Give us a polyp zoom action there. Oh, look. Uh, there's a dog toy up there's above it. It's a black coral. A what coral? Black. That's the opposite of what Dan said. I know, but <laughs> I am not a scientist. 
Yeah, so black coral refers to the, the color of its skeleton, not necessarily down, the color of the meters. tissue. Um, but I'm black corals have okay. six, polyp, or six tentacles on their polyps, Pull, uh, whereas oh, other octocorals fish. have eight fish? tentacles on the polyps. Up above it? Yep, just hanging out right above. Yeah, it's very cute. It's very small. <laughs> Go uh, full zoom for a second, Pete. There, no one. Get out of here. <laughs> Oh. oh no, my That's all I got. tilt's going crazy. Okay, I can uh, go away. Yeah, based on the color and the, the view from far away, I probably would have thought it was a, a different type of coral. Oh yeah, Megan, this is your oh, time to shine, huh? Coral corals? Corals. I know things about corals sometimes. You're watching your altitude now, Danny, not your delta. Yeah, I'm watching my altitude. I'm 40 meters. Yeah, you got plenty of room under you there. We could actually come down a bit more if you wanted. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking on it. I don't know what the teether's doing. Ooh, that's a yellow uh, sponge. We're, we're pretty much out of our max. You keep pulling the me. The one that's on the rock? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to do a flyby on this it's one. It's okay. I'm, I'm behind the curve here. Half a knot. We're we'll going find another one that was... Super fast. I don't have a lot of time to... Oh, that palm and the enemy. flowers. Wasn't as big as that palm we saw earlier today. Yeah, some big pom-pom and enemies, the light banima. Pete, could you bump Atalanta zoom just a little bit? Yep. There we go. look through all That's of better. those Tina Force. Yep. <laughs> a lot of Tina Force. Okay. Are you able to look uh, west now, or are you still not got enough leash? Uh, it keeps pulling me back. I've got come auto heading on, but come it keeps... Come down another five. Another five. I'm going to give you 30 meters off bottom. Yeah. Down in single digits if you want. That's what it takes. You're the captain. Delta Dan. <laughs> that, so that uh, you can see it being pulled around. That's because we're doing half a knot. So <clears throat> you might not be able to spin around. I could give it a little more Jane. Jane. Yeah, you could actually give up and look out in deep water, but see how hard it's wank, wanking around there? Yeah. Yeah. I'll try and come under you, that'll help. But <coughs> because we're moving at half a knot, there's a bump. Watch out for that rock. There's a lot of uh, drag on the 50 meter tether, so it might you might not be able to get around. Yeah, that's kind of what I was uh, envisioning. I don't know if you want to look uh, east, if that makes probably cleaner tether action. You can look east and... And then look down? Yeah, and then look straight down. Anybody home? <laughs> I think there's a shrimp in there. Can I uh, do what we call a laser zoom there, Pete? Yep. And actually the sub is stable, so you can go full zoom. Yeah, there's there a bunch is. of shrimps in there. Yep. Those are good habitat. Neighbor. They're like, oh, it's so nice and cozy in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, Hark. Find a home. 
some guys on the side. There's a lot of shrimp in there. Oh. Yep. Hi, guys. Lots of them. Like, <laughs> hmm. oh, there's a brittle star down in there, there too. Finally. <laughs> They're kind of cute. Okay, sorry, I gotta go. Half right. a knot. Thanks, I appreciated the zoom. We could slow down, you'd have more time to smell oh, these no, flowers. No. I like quick zooms. <laughs> you don't need to like linger too long. No, I, could not, linger. Like, I could linger for days. <laughs> you could, but Adelina's not gonna let you. There sure is a lot of uh, dog toys around here. Dog toys? There are a lot of Tina There are. Tina City. Our friend the same fish. Mm -hmm. Come down, Danny. Stupid come down, tilt. come down, come down. Come right down. I'm coming down. Just fell off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I was at 20 meters pay, uh, off bottom and it went to 40. Oh, I'm about well, to get. That happens on cliffs. Uh, I'm like. <laughs> Moments away from getting tail to tail here, which I can't recover from. Uh, Megan, a question came in about um, if the sponge benefits at all by having shrimp inhabitants. Um, it could, especially in Take areas that have off. a lot of um, sediment and uh, marine snow in the water column. The mm -hmm. shrimps will help keep the the sponge clean. So the sponge does have mechanisms to help clean it out because it is an animal um, and it, it does self clean itself but with high That's it. Like, Game over. <laughs> marine snow falling down uh, the shrimp will well, help maintain the sponge you let the ship drag you away I got too far behind yeah so now what's happening we're getting pulled tail to tail I can't get enough slack to turn around I got a little greedy there on the sponge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. Let's see if I can, uh, I don't know if I can back up fast enough to get yeah. it back around Rick again. doesn't like to go back. Ah, right. stupid tilt. Oh, that was me. Uh, that's at Atlanta. Yeah, no, that was me. Okay. Thank you. The tilt ran away and I hit the edge of the button. Trust me, my heart just jumped a yeah. couple no, decimals. <laughs> but my tilt just keeps running away. Did you guys do a, a midwater transect on the way down? Yes, we did. Yeah. Was it exciting? Actually, it was around 300 meters. It was actually a lot of uh, a lot of life. I mm. bet. Yeah, this is active time for them. Just gave myself a minor heart attack. <laughs> I can do the downhill at point three, but point five was a little. Dan, what do you think causes that runaway? Is it a GUI issue or is it a system problem? It's an uh, untimed driver in the ROS actuators. Fort 5. Is, it's missing the... Uh, if you just hit the other one, so if it runs way up, if you hit down, it'll stop it. Can you go back to 50 meter? Yeah, I just wanted to see the boat. <laughs> you can drag it down if you want to see the boat. Oh, more better. 
Oh, well, you're getting a lot closer to it now, Dan. All right, okay, come down. This is so many. Okay, 30 meters off bottom. It is. Little eel pout. Okay, I'm gonna turn heading back on. Sure, but you can keep that heading. It's a good heading. Works for me. It's the way we're going. <laughs> okay, so you're off to my side. I'm off quite a bit to the south, I think. Yeah. Can you see in my sonar? No, that's not me. I'm under you. 30 meters under you. <laughs> yeah, DBL's like 10 meters off to the north. My yeah. blue dot line is where I actually am. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you are, Hook. <coughs> Make it read home it if you want. Okay. Much more happy to spot. So we can get away with a low, lower delta while we're moving like this because the tether's bowed out behind mm -hmm. us now. Way out behind us. Looks like it's flattening out here. We must be pretty close to our waypoint, yeah. Alright, shit moves complete. Good job. Oh, that's weird. That looks cool. You stop and smell the flowers. Why not? You need to see which way the current's blowing to. It's like we saw some of this attached to one of the um, instruments earlier. Hmm. And we um, detached it. Yeah, we detached it. It was slimy and gross. I and didn't want to bring that I on deck. I don't know what it is. It looks like smoke, which is wild. <laughs> It does. Or fungus. like you cracked an egg underwater. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good Come one. Come down uh, by a meter standing. Like Come down. Egg. Okay, B. We can zoom in there on the billowing smoke cloud. So see how I'm tilting down while he's zooming I mean, in it's there? It's pretty. I have no idea what it is. Soft boiled egg. Totally. I mean, it looks like part of a jelly or something. It actually looks like smoke. <laughs> Super wild. Oh, are those all you bunch can, of uh, shrimp on top? You can zoom in oh, a little yes, tighter kind of there on the square up. <laughs> yeah, nice. Go zoom in nice and slow. It's like a big shrimp colony on top, too. You notice that they're only on top of rocks? Yeah. What's that thing in the middle? That's a good shot there. Just yeah, I don't know. Lasers. Whatever this thing is. It was probably something prettier and larger at one point. Definitely got some uh, current going on here. We do have jellyfish around here called fried egg jellies. Fried egg jellies? Well, that, yeah, if, that, it looks if it looks fried like egg. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've caught up to you. Right up. Yeah, it definitely has like more specific forms at the bottom. 
almost like little tentacle-like things. Atlanta's got a good view. Uh, go, uh, go tight there for a minute, Pete. Like right there. You can go uh, a little bit tighter there. Are those teeth? <laughs> oh, it's super weird. I wouldn't touch the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we nudged it off uh, the thing we were I was like, it looks retrieving. like part of a jelly. Maybe we should not have that accidentally come up with a thing. There's some sort of animal in it. Yeah. Bye, hook. Worm. Uh, you can, you can, you can spin, uh, some way, <laughs> whatever our new bearing is going to be. Okay, Pete, come, uh, wide, nice and slow. You could make that your new screensaver. <laughs> What's our new bearing going to be? Uh, uh, once we get started, we're going to go 259. Bring your head to 259, Danny, and I'll get out in front of you. Oh, look, there I am. Okay, let's start. Uh, uh, we got it. Is this a no touch em camera transect? I'm assuming so. That's how transects work. Oh, well. Okay, we didn't yeah. really yeah, settle at where I thought be we a would. Consistent speed transect. Can I uh, push in a bit there, Pete? Push. What we were doing was pushing a little bit past that front yeah. porch. Yeah. And then. Uh, Set my iris to about 40, 50 percent. 259, you say. Well, I think I'm going to correct that because I was measuring from the start position, but that's not where Atalanta is. I'm close enough. But the, your. Uh, your from new, where I am yeah, now, it, where Atalanta be, is now. From where Atalanta is now, it's 263. All right, are we ready to get the ship moving? Uh, what's our bearing going to be now? Sorry, I missed it. 263. 263. <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah, you can uh, move, the, move the ship. How fat? Like, do you want to do... Point um, three up point the hill. Three. Yeah, because... Without stopping the whole way? Uh, yeah, or, we'll try. Yeah, yeah. Should be able to do that. Or do you want it to do a shorter... No, just do a point three. Okay. It's not wasn't that steep, so I should be able to keep up. I might have to cry uncle at some point, but I'll just go faster. Bridge now. Hi. Um, so now we would like to go 350 meters at uh, 263. Point three knots, please. Uh, AJ, does this look good in terms of luminance, brightness? Or do you want it a little down? Uh, it looks good to me. Um, is this similar to what Fabio had you doing? Yes, but if our um, s distance off the floor changes, then it changes this. So if we're going to be in a it fixed... It does, because we're going uphill now and we're looking down. Okay, so I'll do my best to ride it then. All right, um, thank you. Yeah, we're, if I leave it alone, then it'll go dark or start to go super bright. Right, I see. Um, Fabio's back. Yeah, Fabio's back. You can okay. comment, but yeah, if you try to brighten it, then I'm sure he'll say something if it's not. 
Yeah, this is a, this is about where we've been. Okay. You said two six zero. That's going to be challenging because because uh, of the current. That's, yeah. Well, that's the only way up the hill. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? Uphill against the wind. Ah, uh, we're Not gonna always. cheat a little and put our nose into it a little. How does this look, Fabio? Uh, you? Looks good. Okay. I don't think we'll be seeing a lot of. Up the hill is actually kind of this so. way. Well, the local hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Megan, would you mind putting your mic a little closer to your. Thank you. Sure. You can see on my Herx sonar is there. Yeah. Or I guess it's, uh, yeah, who knows. We're in a bowl. Yeah, well, we're at the bottom of this canyon. Yeah. So a couple questions. One, the weather here. Um, this person's asking from Southern California. So I'd say it's kind of like a Southern California fall right now. It's cool-ish and a little drizzly. And then here's a question, AJ or Fabio, for you. Um, would you would our seismometers be able to pick up on earthquakes as far as the Alaska Peninsula region? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we pick up earthquakes all over the world. Um, yeah, like all the way in Asia. And oh really? That far out? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a really cool earthquake portal on the Ocean Networks Canada website. Uh, I can try to gather the link for you here. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it'll show you. Um, Have we started the survey? Not uh, yet. Just now, if you're happy. Sorry to disturb. Okay. Start of line. All right, marking the start now. Start. Okay. Um, it shows you not only the, the recent earthquakes that our system has detected, but it'll actually also show you the readout of the shaking from each of our seismometers in various sites on the ocean floor. Um, yeah, which is, is pretty neat to see sometimes because yeah. you can also see the delay between the sites um, as the waves propagate inshore or, or in whatever direction they're, they're moving. And so that helps us source the earthquake too by being able to triangulate the system, the signal. Yeah, so if you, where's the link here? If you just Google Ocean Networks Canada earthquake uh, dashboard or earthquake data dashboard, uh, there's a really neat um, portal there. And actually I see maybe they're asking because there was uh, oh, you're seeing it. Yeah. an Alaska Peninsula or a 7.2 earthquake picked yep. up on our system. That's exactly why they were asking. Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty close as far as earthquakes go that we detect. And then you can see Endeavor, Clackwatt Slope, and Barkley Canyon signals showing that earthquake mm -hmm. on the website as well, which is really neat. I believe we also have evidence of the Hungatong, what was it, the Hungatonga Hunga Hapai eruption detected on our, on our devices too? Oh yeah, yeah. We, we picked that up and then we also watched that sort of baby, super baby wave um, like the actual ocean wave propagating through the Pacific on all of our bottom pressure recorders. So there was like, so there was a tsunami warning and then it went away. It ne didn't end up being a tsunami warning, but people thought it could have caused a tsunami. We saw the little waves uh, propagate across the ocean. It's pretty cool. Are they able to feel a, like the warning one? The P wave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So. Some of our seismometers are part of our earthquake early warning system. Mm -hmm. And that is a system that detects primary waves and sends out, or there's like a central computer that gathers that information and is able to use it to determine the magnitude and location of the 
earthquake itself, and then if necessary, send an alert to yeah. residents of British Columbia. Um, and we have a lot of land stations for that as well. Mm -hmm. So we use a whole bunch of the um, seismometers on the seafloor that we've been servicing during this expedition, but in order to create redundancy in the system and in order to have, I guess, um, more data points for the algorithm to source from, we've also outfitted uh, Vancouver Island with uh, upwards of 20 seismometers um, as well that contribute to that network. Yeah. Being from California, I think that early warning system or the whole idea of it is very interesting to me. And I just, you know, who, like, you how can, do you uh, broadcast? You can bump him up to 0.5 for now. You know, that information. Yeah. Are you warning the public? Push yeah, notifications. So we're still, yeah, oh. we're still trying Bridge to now. sort that out. Um, um, can we go 0.5 for now? Thanks. Uh, that we're still sort of, that's the stage of the project that we're in where we've sort of validated our algorithm and we've validated our sites and we've compared our data to other earthquake early warning systems that pick up the same earthquakes and the NRCAN reporting system for analyzing earthquakes after they happen. So we have a lot of confidence in our system and now we're just trying to figure out how to get that information in the hands of the public. So um, I believe we're looking to work with uh, USGS who uh, do the same thing in California and Oregon and Washington. And they use a service called ShakeAlert mm -hmm. where um, I believe the like ShakeAlert, it sends it, it packages the messages in a way that different app developers can essentially act as that final link. So you can download an app that gets its messages from ShakeAlert. Mm -hmm. And this is the system that we're trying to incorporate our sensors into in order to encompass the area um, that we're responsible for on Vancouver Island and, British, and um, British Columbia. I believe I downloaded an app. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Let's see if I can find it. What we do is shake something. I know, Sean, you lived in Japan for a little bit. Yep. And, like, there, even when they had their very large earthquake, what, in 2012, 11 or 12, um, they had their early warning. And so, like, my friends were living there, and they said, you know, they were watching the news, and there was just a countdown. Yeah. You know, they had they, a good um, five-minute warning that it was going to happen. Yeah, they're... Their earthquake warning system is highly integrated with all facets of their society. So mm -hmm. you'll get notifications on phones, televisions will broadcast, uh, and like suddenly be interrupted with um, alerts. Um, yeah, it's it's quite impressive what the Japanese have done. Yeah, so I found the app. I have an app called MyShake, which gets its alerts from ShakeAlert USGS. Mm -hmm. And so that would be your... Uh, American earthquake early warning system in action. And so our system uses slightly different methodology. I believe we have fewer sensors, but the sensors are all purpose-driven for earthquake early warning, whereas I think USGS takes advantage of all sorts of different sensors and then has to do a lot more processing to the data in order to make sense of it all, whereas ours are a lot um, sort of set up with this purpose in mind. Um, but yeah, I think the idea is to integrate our data into the system so that whatever that back end looks like, it's the same for both Americans and Canadians, which makes sense because our coastlines are right, right. very close and similar. We can take advantage of the data um, in Washington to predict our Are we smelling the flowers? Yeah, that looks uh, yeah I'm just waiting so. for the ship here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just like there's no borders in the ocean, there's no borders for earthquakes That's too. That's right, yeah. Pause, pause survey, wait wait for ship. And I live so close to the American border that if I drop a pin right on Orca Island or whatever those Washington San Juan Islands are, then I can probably get alerts from Victoria yeah. <laughs> from the shake alert system as well. So much refraction of the light in the water column. Resume survey.
surprised the DVL can do it in this breeze. I didn't think it could. It was doing pretty good all the way down. We're definitely closer to the ocean floor. Than we were at the beginning. We also have a different set of lights on, I think. It's uh, <coughs> the hill's gotten steeper. So it's same altitude, but the hill's done that. So I can come up a little. No, oh, it's good. I chasing a little bit, so I'm trying to keep the iris consistent. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's hard when it goes from flat to steep, but it should be this gradient for might steepen up a little bit here. Another 40 meters or so, hard to say. I'm just watching Adelaide Sona so I don't end up going into the side of a mountain. Yeah, we came down it was pretty benign, so. Well, it's going to tighten up here pretty soon. Contour. Can you uh, slow them back down to point 0.3, please? Can do. Bridge now. Can we slow down back to point 0.3? Yep, thanks. Oh. Doing a little excavation. Is that a big rock? Nope. 
Yeah, the contour just uh, tightened up, so it means we're going steeper. Yeah, you're going to have to come up a little faster. I'm getting oh, behind okay. you here. Yeah, can we keep this altitude instead uh, of... Come on, stop for a minute, Megan, please. Bridge now. Can we stop the ship? Thanks. I should have done that earlier, my bad. Yeah, you got a little greedy, huh? I did. Fabio, you were asking something? Well, I was trying to say that <coughs> we'd like to keep that translated as homogeneous as with the previous one it looks like we are we were a bit higher but of course the terrain was different so the altimeter was in the back of the vehicle yeah i mean the altimeter is at the back of the vehicle and we're on a 45 degree slope so do the math so but can we fly a bit farther then what's that can we fly a bit farther higher higher Higher, yeah. Yeah, we're doing a uh, four or five meter on the way down. You want more view it, more of the camera? Uh, maybe this, yeah. Can maybe also we, zoom out a little bit. Not, zoom out a couple. That's good, yeah. When do you want me to resume the ship move? Mm. Anytime. Anytime? Anytime you want. All right. Point three again, please. Bridge nav. Can we resume that move? We need 150 more meters. Uh, what was it, what did I tell you? 263, yeah. Perfect, thank you. This is more similar, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was a little low there. I try and judge by the front of the vehicle, what the height is. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were a little tight on the zoom. Should have, it's a silly place for altimeter. I want one in the front of the vehicle. Except for when you're going downhill, then you want it in the back of the vehicle. <laughs> you should have it on the slider. <laughs> we'll just do two of them. You know, they're not expensive. Actually, it's nice when it's in the middle of the vehicle, right. but it's up 300 millimeters up inside the frame. So then you get more of an average. Isn't that where the altimeter actually is, but not the DVL? DVL is on the, on the roof. We don't have an altimeter. We just have a DVL. Oh, your fellow must be in the center then. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little bit here and try and... Not exactly a straight line, it's more of a random line. I'm trying to keep the vehicle looking uphill here. Look at that. I think we've seen this cable before. Wow. Yeah. 
We probably have seen that cable before because we <laughs> crossed over it on the way down. <laughs> yeah. Good thing it's not suspended. You can come up there, Danny. I'm coming. Nice and easy. Oh, look at you. I can see you hug. Really good. How long has that cable been there? Probably a while. That's a cool view. Yeah, you can come up another 10 meters now, probably. Oh, I'm following you. You can push the delta up a little bit more. So, ONC folks, how many instruments are in your domain out here? Do you have a total count? Like, I'm just curious. Specific to Neptune or all of ONC? All of, all of them. All of ONC. Yeah, thousands. Actually, I wrote an abstract. I'll get this for a <laughs> conference uh, that we're the chemosynthesis based ecosystems that we're attending in Sao Paulo, actually in Brazil. Uh, let me get this number. I think it's 10,000. Wow. 10,000. Um, OK. Here's the question I have. How many IPs do you have in Neptune? How many IPs? That's for AJ. Oh, that's another good question. Well, how many <laughs> nodes do we have? We have <laughs> five nodes. With at least one IP at each site. Yeah, I think all of them have more than one IP. At least. And each IP has like, what, four or five instruments coming off of it? Uh, I would say more than that more. as well. Oh yeah, you have dual sided, so Yeah. We can do some quick math here. One, two, three, okay. Four, five. In the meantime I tell you what I wrote in my abstract here. The eight hundred and fifty plus kilometer network of seafloor backbone cables. Here of course accounting for Venus, Neptune and all the other small single note observatories. Um, connect over a hundred instrumented sites, more than 1,000 oceanographic instruments, and more than 12,000 sensors. Wow. That's, sorry, I, I misjudged there, but 1,000 yeah. instruments and 12,000 sensors. All bringing real-time data back to your networks. Yes. Yeah. That's incredible. That's a lot. I think we have 18, at least 18 junction boxes. I might be missing some site that has two, but at least 18. Why is my camera running around? I'm moving it. Oh. You had your hand busy on the winch there. Oh. You probably should tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you when I take your cameras. You can tell it's the last dive. <laughs> <laughs> second to last. Second, I was like, second wait, I thought we had one Sorry. more. <laughs> I know. You can like tell it's the second to last second dive. <laughs> People are saying it's the last one. When the co-pilot and the pilot are bickering. Yeah, this is the last dive. The, la the next dive is the encore. <laughs> is it called the penultimate? <laughs> yes, yeah. penultimate. The penultimate dive. <laughs> that sounds uh, more fancy. It's second to last. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sweet word. <laughs> it's a quit, cut and closer. Quit flying your vehicle and fly mine because I'm like, light years away from the seabed. I thought I'd keep a pretty good job keeping you in my box. I was trying to see what the tether was doing. Wow, that's wild. Look in your tail cam. That is the name of that, that camera, tail cam. You don't like butt? 
aft camera is the proper name for but it. But Hercules has a tail. Yeah, it does have a tail. And it wags. <laughs> it does have a tail that wags. It's a famous Deb Kelly saying from the old Ropos. Wag your tail. Go up the hill and wag your tail. Or no, how, how'd she say it? Wag your tail on the way up the hill. <laughs> she would like you to do this on the way up the hill so she could see everything. Yeah. <laughs> we like to see lots of stuff. Is Deb still sailing? Uh, she was going to come out on the uh, RCA cruise last year and then didn't, so I'm not sure what her... Sailing status is. I know John Delaney's not. Just in our device list, which is kind of a list of all the instruments we've ever had at some point, we have 6,337 entries. So not all of those are deployed, obviously, but that gives you an idea of how big our database of instruments is over the years. And you guys are federally funded, correct? Um, our funding has changed through the years. Uh, I think we've always been majority funded by the Canadian Foundation for Innovation, which is a federal, um, I don't know, not an institution, but a body, a funding agency. Yeah, it like, funds like for on national infrastructure, science. basically. So yeah. it's kind of like our National Science Foundation? Yeah. Uh, not okay, really, I think actually, you can because speed them up to NSF five, funds. No, I think we should just stay at point three. NSF Good transects are consistent speed. And CFI funds infrastructure. Gotcha. Yeah, what, oh. what's the equivalent of NSF in Canada? It's like NR, not NRCAN, and uh, NSERC. NSERC, that's it. Okay, so you guys get funded for infrastructure, so okay, so that, that makes the difference. Okay. We get funded along with other, like, I think major science initiatives are like other big laboratories in a way. Okay, I'll try and slow down that. To Good. I like that plan. Research grants. Um, and then we've always had to I'll find to uh, match funding. Bias, so we've had to find 40% of the funding That's my problem. through other means. Right now that 40% is coming from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, which is also a federal body. So uh, right now, as of this fiscal year, we're 100% federally funded for Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, maybe not 100%, but close to. No, we have a lot slow. of project partners outside <laughs> of the federal government that contribute. And is Ropos wrapped up under that, or is that a uh, kind of a... Ropos isn't private, right? Uh, Ropos is Come a completely five, separate thing, Danny? and yeah. I do not know how they're funded. Okay. We can hold a CSSF Delta now. We on a flat plane now? No, just the uh, boat's going on a post to Atlanta there. We're almost there. That's 60 meters to go. Definitely pretty awesome it's system you have out here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy to imagine, and it's been operating for quite some time now, which is also pretty pretty fascinating to me. I mean, I only joined in 2019, so to, to see that Venus has been running for over 15 years, and I think Neptune is coming up on 15, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is awesome. Is that beyond their expected um, service time? No, uh, I believe the service life for most of our major components was something like 25 years. Okay. Uh, I know that we're doing a bit of a midlife uh, assessment of our infrastructure in order to determine like what's working, what isn't, what we need to be considering uh, upgrades for or replacements for. A lot of the infrastructure, a lot of the like networking components can be hard to source now because those types of things <laughs> tend to um, you discontinue, phase they get phased out, and you get newer models, and then you have to figure out which newer models can play nice with the old models. So there's some of that going on now, yep. some of those discussions. Um, but 
yeah, so far these are all original nodes. The original junction box design has maintained pretty much the same. Huh. Um, we're definitely trying to sort of um, increase the capacity by, in certain places, adding our own kind of made in-house mini junction boxes that can turn a single port on a junction box into multiple ports. So Tilt if you have a few, up. you know, power and bandwidth, like less power and bandwidth hungry instruments, we can branch them out even further from the junction boxes. And this is a way for us to add capacity. So one of the areas that we multi-beamed yesterday at the end of our work at Cascadia is uh, an area that we're hoping to add sort of a new third site at Cascadia, and that would be done um, with a mini junction box, which is sort of uh, our own in-house developed smaller version of the junction boxes that get put on our IPs. So that's kind of a way in which yeah. we're, we're trying to increase capacity without adding new major infra infrastructure. Um, I, I haven't seen so much serial data connectivity in one place in a very long time. So this has been kind of fun to see. Like you guys have all of the, you know, DB, DB9, DB16 connectors. <laughs> yeah, it's like Jeb. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you guys hate it, but it's. I share an office with Jeb back at MTC and like his whole half of the office just looks to me like all DB9 connectors. <laughs> <laughs> he does, he does a lot with the size of it, the seismic. Uh, DB whatever. DB yeah. whatever. <laughs> We have a drawer named DB whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm visualizing Jeb's um, workspace, and it's got quite a picture of a lot of cables, a lot of cables, a lot of a lot of rescued equipment. He, Thirty uh, meters. He earned his nickname of Dumpster mm. Dexter for a reason. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's just trying to repurpose it, right? It's, it's exactly. It's the most noble undertaking, but we're still going to make one of them for it. <laughs> Extra hard today because it was his birthday. It is his birthday, isn't it? Uh, no, it's past well, it's midnight. past midnight. Oh. Well, he kept it a secret from all of us. Uh, I feel like we knew and Allison was going to put up decorations, but then... I don't think they were up, and then I saw the cake, and it was funny because you all were outside, and uh, they lit the candles and did the cake inside, and then you all missed it outside because it was super <laughs> low-key, and so then Josh ran out with, like, one candle, and then that's when you all sang. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there. I slept through it all. Yeah. But uh, that sounds like a good time. It is like Jeb to keep that information from us. Mm -hmm. So how'd the secret get out to the guys right. uh, making the cake? You wanna call it? They have sure. his passport. <laughs> All right, we've reached the end of our transect. Perfecto. So 08, 07, 30. Next. Where to? All right, we're gonna go to the IP. Barclay Mid-East.